Hello and welcome to freephotoshop.com. Thanks to all the users who voted on our What's Next poll on the website, Layers and Masks battled it out to a draw, so here's my take on layers in Photoshop. I've decided to do this video as two parts. In this one, we'll answer the questions, what are layers and how do they work? And in the following video, I'll show you how to make your own layered composition. Alright, so let's get started. I've got open an image on screen called Understanding Layers, and it's going to serve us as the best place to understand what's going on in the Layers panel. Now, when Photoshop was first released, it didn't feature layers at all. Instead, anything that you did in way of improving an image, or designing, or adding anything to the image at all, everything would be placed on just one single solitary layer, which is the background layer you see at the bottom of this particular stack right here. Now the background with this little lock on it isn't strictly speaking a layer at all, it just represents the image that's open in Photoshop, but because of the way the layer panel works, we're going to include it in the count. It certainly has more limitations than the free floating layers that you see above it, so the square, the cross and the circle. Now if this was how our layers panel looked, then the layers would be arranged as they sit on the left side of this diagram. So the background layer would be at the bottom, then the blue square, then the red cross and finally the green circle. Where you see the shapes sitting on this checkerboard, that means they are sitting on nothing. So the pattern represents transparency, which is why we can see through these layers to the ones below. So how would this image look in the image window? Well, let's see. I'll turn off the layer stack and reveal the actual image, and hopefully the reason why the image looks this way is making sense. We can see all the green circle because that's right at the top of the stack. Below that we can see the red cross except for the areas that are covered by the green circle. Then we can see the blue square minus what's covered up by the red cross and green circle. And then under all of that we have the white background. Alright, so hopefully layers are now making sense and you're able to relate to how the image is represented in the layers panel. So I'll switch over to another image called Dolphins because I want to show you the biggest advantage of using layers. This is a photograph I took at SeaWorld in Orlando a few years ago and it's an image I started making to support a whole series on layers that I planned uh, a while back now. It didn't actually make it out of the communication notes I'd been writing for it but anyway it's an image that contains lots of layers. In fact, every last element of this image is on its own layer, and that's going to make it incredibly easy to edit in the future. For example, these curtains on the side of the image, they are both on their own layers, right up here at the top of the stack. So at any point, I can press the little eyeball and switch it off to remove the effect from view. I can then switch it back on again to reinstate it. If I come down to the flipper layer, which just happens to be a text layer that I created with the type tool, I can easily turn off the text. I can also turn off the line that comes out from the side of the image and the little highlighted circle as well. I'll go ahead and turn them back on again because that's not the only advantage of having these elements on their own layers. It also gives me the ability to change things, edit them, rotate them, change the color of something, make it bigger or smaller. The list is endless. As far as the text goes, I can go ahead and change the font, the formatting or the style by simply finding it in the layers panel and double clicking the thumbnail to switch to the type tool and give me all the options I need up here in the options bar. So if I go ahead and click on the color swatch up here and then find another color such as bright red say, something like this will do, click OK and we'll easily change the color of the text to red without changing anything else in the image. Now for the other side of the coin. What if we weren't using layers? If I save this image out as a JPEG or a ping, then I would be flattening the image because those file formats don't support layers and other ones don't as well. So there's plenty of formats out there that don't support the layers that you see in the layers panel. In order to save the layers, I would need to save the file as a PSD, which is Photoshop's native format, or a TIFF if you prefer. Even if you had to save 
to JPEG because you wanted to save for the web or something else where layers are not available, I'd still recommend saving it as a PSD as well. You never know when you're going to need access to all those layers in the future. So by having two images, one as a PSD with layers, one as a JPEG for the web without layers, that's going to serve your purpose just fine. So what's the image going to look like without layers? Well to simulate that I'm going to come up here to the layer menu and choose the flatten image command. All of the layers have been flattened onto this one background layer. Apart from that though, nothing else has changed. We haven't lost any details, no colours have changed, nothing's happened except the removal of those layers. And why does that matter? Well, if I want to go back in now and change that red text back to white, I'm going to have to do a lot of work because Photoshop can no longer identify the text from the rest of the image. So we'd have to go in and select the text and then recolor it in that way. A huge amount of work and there's no doubt in my mind that even if we did have the time to do all of that, it still wouldn't look as good as making those changes with the live text tool. Well I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you can now see how layers work in the layers panel and why they're so important to modern day image editing in pretty much every image editing application out there. Thanks for joining me. The next part of this will be available as soon as I can get it up so join me there. For now thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.